I'm Hazel. It's Saturday today, which makes it time to sit down and catch up on the WoW news of the week, what I have been up to, and answer some of your questions. This week, Blizzard released an updated roadmap for Dragonflight, detailing where we are now and where we are going next. News in this is that it tells us the next patch, 1017, is slated for fall. And I've noticed that season three here does not specifically say winter, so there is a chance that comes before winter sometime in late fall. I know 1015 just came out, but 1017 is around the corner and there's already cool new things to look forward to. First thing that I'm most excited about is Forsaken and Night Elf Heritage Armor is coming to WoW in patch 1017. The Undead Heritage Armor looks like this. This has been data mined by WoWhead, and this is the one they also felt good enough about to release images of early. And then the Night Elf one is still being data mined and it hasn't been officially previewed yet, but this is an early work in progress look at the sort of structure of the Night Elf Heritage Armor. I am deeply excited about this. I already have Night Elf and Forsaken characters leveled up and ready to go. So that's one of my top things that I'll be looking forward to in 10.17. Speaking of customizations in 10.17, they are also adding Eridar style skin and hair options for Drenai characters in this new upcoming patch. These are perfect for that Drenai Warlock you've been thinking about making ever since they decided to let you do that in 10.15. It looks like there's going to be some form of questline or achievement that might explain these a little bit, but I'm not too fussed about the reasons, I just want an Eridar Drenai Warlock. <laughs> in terms of more nuts and bolts things that are coming in 10.17, pings are being introduced to the game and these are actually a really cool new thing, especially if you're somebody that does um, pugged group content. Pings are kind of these short-term alerts that you can place in the world or onto enemies in 10.17 um, with different options including attack, non-threatening alert, warnings, that kind of thing. And these are going to be great for pugs to use to quickly point out things like stack points, priority targets, um, without needing to be in voice chat. It's a great accessibility option for players that are hard of hearing and another way for people to overcome language barriers in the game as well. These only last for about five seconds, so it's not exactly like a raid marker, it's more of like a short-term look at this thing kind of notification, but a tool that I'm really looking forward to in 10.17. Moving on to the live game as it stands today, in news that Hazel's really excited about, they've updated the Glyph of Shadow. For my non-Shadow Priest friends, the Glyph of Shadow is a glyph that reduces the shadowiness of your shadow form for Shadow Priests. It's been in the game for a long time, and previously it was a little underwhelming, but now Glyph of Shadow makes your shadow form so minimized that you can actually see your transmog, you can see the colors of your transmog. Being a purple cloud of smoke is pretty iconic for Shadow Priests, but it's also the thing that kind of made me want to play other specs and classes because I really wanted to be able to see my transmog. So this is just a dream come true and something that I'm definitely using on my undead Shadow Priest alt. If you would like to get this shadow form appearance, it's available in game. Just check your auction house for the Glyph of Shadows uh, and scribes that know how to make the glyph might be able to make a little extra gold. Other news in the live game, Blizzard has added bad luck protection for the Evoker legendary weapon to heroic and mythic difficulties. This is an increased chance to drop with each failed loot, so every time you kill it and don't get it, you'll have a better chance to get it next time on heroic and mythic, so this does not affect LFR and normal. And the dev quote on the topic says, We'd like to see Nazuro the Unbound Legacy become more obtainable for players who are regularly completing the highest levels of difficulty of the raid, while also keeping its status as an aspirational reward that any evoker may work towards. Um, I am thrilled about this. I'm a little biased because I do clear it on heroic every week, but this is much better than making endless evokers or giving up, which were your previous two options for how to deal with the legendary drop rate. I still don't have the Legendary yet, but now I feel like I might actually have a chance of getting it before the next raid tier. Other new things this week, they introduced a brand new 6 month sub mount called the Wondrous Wave Whisker. I am on a 12 month recurring sub and they gave it to me for that. It looks like this, it's magnificent, um, obviously. I haven't seen such a beautiful mount since the sun warmed fur line, in my subjective opinion. That's the whole news of post. I just I just love it very much. So if you're on a six month or a 12 month sub, you should be able to claim this as a gift through your launcher. And if you really want the mount and you're not in a six or a 12 month sub and you don't want to be, it is available separately as an in-game shop purchase. They've also added a new mountain pet bundle, some kind of Kodo situation. I'm less excited about that because, well, because they didn't give it to me with my 12 month sub. <laughs> Them's the breaks. 
Other news, Flightstone catch-up gear is coming, not currently available in the game, but with this upcoming weekly reset, July the 18th. Also, they're lifting the conquest cap. But if you have 1000 plus rating in Mythic Keystones and you have Flightstones to burn on your main, you will be able to purchase BOA boxes of gear for 250 stones each to mail to your alts. Very similar to um, Valor boxes that we used to be able to buy to send to alts to get them geared up. The gear starts at item level 398, which will not last you very long if you're planning on gearing up that character, but if they just finished leveling and they're starting at like 330, that's a pretty big step up and it's much better than the 385 Primalist gear that you might have been sending them otherwise. I'm excited about this because my main that I do keystones on tends to cap on flight stones and I wish they would just like lift the flight stone cap or raise it dramatically, but if they're not going to do that, then this will make me feel a little bit better. I've got lots of alts that could use gear. And then yeah, this week 1015 came out. It's been it's been fun. Um, time rifts are laggy, but they are fun. <laughs> and lots of really cool cosmetics that I want from those, so I've been having fun doing that. The new Mega Dungeon is difficult, but also fun. It's probably more fun with a pre-made group of friends that you're used to playing with as opposed to pugging. I've heard that Morchi is a little bit of a pug breaker, <laughs> but I, uh, I've run the Mega Dungeon twice and I've had a wonderful time both times. I am working on a video for that still. It is late. My apologies, it will be out as soon as it is done and I am happy with it, which is hopefully sooner rather than later. I hear there is lots of grindy content related to tier 3 transmogs and old Scalamonts and old Naxxramas for people to do if they're looking to have a blast from the past and have something old to grind. And then what else have I been up to? I finished that gold making video, took me long enough, but it is out now if you've been curious about how I have been making Golden Dragonflight uh, with crafting professions. That includes everything that I know, and I will link it in the description. Putting that video out for whatever reason has given me a renewed surge of interest in um, <laughs> crafting a bunch of stuff to make more gold, especially with the Mega Dungeon making people more eager to purchase consumables, so I have been crafting a lot. <laughs> and then questions for this week. Scary Zachary, had to look at that for a hot minute to figure out that one, asked, I looked into it and heard you can solo old LFR raids. Is this true? And how have I never heard of this until now? Yes, this is true. You will find an NPC, and they're located in different places depending on what the raid is, but there are NPCs that you can talk to that will let you queue up for individual LFR wings for old raids. This is available for all of the old LFRs beginning with Dragon Soul, which was the first LFR, all the way up until Shadowlands LFR. So this will not help you with um, Dragonflight. <laughs> but if you want to queue up for any of the old ones, it's great for farming transmog. Um, there's a couple of mounts that can drop in LFR, such as the Abyss Worm for Mr. Sassine and Tumas Argaris. Some of the wings will be easier to solo than others, but most of that stuff you can just blow right through to collect all of your uh, transmog appearances. And that has been the week. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got a question for a news video, pop in the comments, include the word question. Stop by a stream sometime if you like, or if the time sucks for you and you'd prefer to watch stream VODs on YouTube, I have a separate YouTube channel for that that I will link down below. I'm trying to get it to a thousand subs and we're really close, so appreciate the help on that. Thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.